Another day and another set of reward changes here in NHL 24. If you're a Hut fan and you haven't been following what's happening, you've missed a lot, but now it might turn out that you didn't really miss that much. Let's go through all the changes. Now, over the last week, Rivals rewards were changed and then Squad Battle rewards were changed and everyone freaked out because they were terrible. And then EA was like, all right, you know what? You're right. This is wrong. Let's go ahead and fix this. And then they went ahead and changed it even more today. And it's a positive change. I don't know what happened, but hey, let's go. We did it. In a tweet from the Clapperton, who is our community manager, just has this right here, NHL 24 Hut update. The link will bring you to this page. Now let's go through what Clappy had to say and see what's changing here in NHL 24. We wanted to reach out and provide clarity around the new reward structure you've been seeing across Hut, as well as our future plans surrounding it. Firstly, our intention was to never give less value for playing Rivals or Squad Battles when we first introduced this new collectible system. But it's fair to say we may have misevaluated their value, which led to justifiable frustration. Yeah, a lot of it. One of our goals with this new system is to allow more flexibility and the ability to choose rewards that matter the most to you based on your current team situation. We're also hoping to build longer term goals with the collectibles like the 86 Kucherov and have you acquire larger guaranteed rewards that you could earn under the old system. These sets will progress alongside overall increases throughout the year to ensure you're always getting the proper value for your time in the various game modes. We plan on continuing to tweak and add new sets as time goes on, continuing to find new offerings to best utilize all collectibles, and your feedback will be vital in helping us find what works best. We've been monitoring the feedback surrounding this and we'll be adjusting the collectibles rewarded during the week of Rivals and Squad Battles and moving forward. They heard our cries, they know that we were upset and they fixed it, so good on them. Should have never happened in the first place, but things are looking up. For Rivals rewards, we have some changes. We will be adjusting the rewards for the current running Rivals immediately so that you'll receive updated rewards when Rivals end next week. So for those of you who don't know, Tuesdays, 5 p.m. Eastern, that's when Rivals ends. You will get your rewards 24 hours after that on Wednesday at 5 o'clock Eastern. We will be reverting option two, the untradeable pack option of rewards back to the original rewards we had last year. For option one rewards, which are usually your tradable rewards, we will bring back all the top value packs at each tier and division as they were in previous years. The lesser value pack will be replaced with enough collectibles to purchase the same pack, as well as have additional collectibles left over to work towards more rewards. We will also be adjusting the value of some sets to give collectibles even more value than they had previously. These changes will allow you to choose between earning rewards towards a collectible path or the standard untradeable option from previous years. When moving to squad battles, we will also be adjusting the rewards for the currently running squad battles immediately so that you will get the updated rewards when squad battles end next week. Similarly, the rivals, the lesser value pack in each reward tier will be replaced with enough collectibles to purchase the same lesser value pack that was swapped with some collectibles left over. Some squad battle sets will be adjusted to make the value of collectibles even higher. So what they're doing is essentially getting rid of the lesser value pack. So if you played squad battles and the less value pack was like a premium pack, they're going to allow you to get like four or five collectibles. You can still get that premium pack if you want, or you can save those collectibles for the future for a better reward. This is a W. There's a lot of problems that EA has had this year with NHL 24 and Hockey Ultimate Team, but the way that they're handling this is a W. Don't get me wrong. In terms of Hot Rush, We've seen the issues coming from certain objectives or prompts not properly triggering and moving forward, we will be avoiding these types of objectives until those issues are resolved. Rush is still having issues after all of the changes this year, so hopefully they can get that fixed ASAP. For those of you who don't know, Rush did reset today and there's an entire new week of rewards. It's the same as last week, but you can earn 4 million points by doing objectives yet again, just to get some extra untradeable stuff for your team. Event and Power Up Collectibles We're adding a Hut Headliner Collectible to a Power Up Collectible set. We're adding more Hut Headliner Collectible sets to allow higher overall players to be exchanged for Hut Headliner Collectibles. And we're adding more Power Up Collectible sets to allow higher overall players to be exchanged for Power Up Collectibles. Now some of, if not all of the changes are already live in Hut, so let's dive in and take a look. So you can now trade in 85 overall players. If you have five of them, you can trade in five 85 overall or better players. And you're going to get three Power Up Collectibles and a player pack. You can trade in five 84 or higher for two Power Up Collectibles or 583 or higher for one power up collectible. At least we have some value in the 83 to 85 overall cards now that we didn't have at the beginning of the year for these sets. We can also trade in five of the Hut Headliner collectibles for one power up collectible. So if you're earning them through Hut Rush or through objectives or whatever, you can trade them in for a power up. 
Looking through rivals now, we can see the rewards have changed. If you finish in platinum in Division 2, you get a Jumbo Elite Player Pack and eight gold collectibles that's tradable. Or if you want the untradable option, you get two Jumbo Elite Player Packs and two Elite Packs. And gold, two Elite Player Packs and two Mega Packs. Or it's one Elite Player Pack, one Mega Pack, and five gold collectibles. So if you finish in iron, you get a Premium Player Pack and two gold collectibles. Bronze is an NHL Player Pack and three collectibles. And silver is an Elite Pack and four collectibles. Before, it was just collectibles and no packs, so this is definitely better. As for squad battles, it still doesn't tell you the packs that you're going to get or what collectibles you get or anything. Like, it doesn't tell you what they are, but they did say that no matter what, you'll be able to trade in the collectibles for the same value pack and have some extra collectibles left over. So that, no matter what, is a W if that's the case. We do also have changes to the squad battle set, so let's go ahead and take a look at that now. One silver collectible will get you a two gold player pack. You get the silver collectibles from squad battles. Two will either get you a base pack, a premium pack, or a four gold player pack. Three can get you a tradable prime pack. The rest of the packs I mentioned are all tradable, so we have a jumbo premium pack, a player pack, or a mini NHL player pack for five silver collectibles. For seven, you can get a premium player pack. For 10, an NHL player pack. 12 is a mega pack. 16 is a jumbo elite pack. 25 for a jumbo elite player pack. And then it would be five for a diamond collectible. You can also trade in eight for an 84 overall line A or one for a 76 overall Samuel Ernie. There have not been any changes to the hot rush or live moment sets as of right now when I'm recording this. That may still change. But overall, positive changes to the rewards. And this is the third or fourth time I'm talking about rewards this week. Kind of sick of it. I hope they just stay and we end up getting what we want. Anyways, guys, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. Let me know down below what you think of all the changes to the rewards. A lot of confusion over the last week. Hopefully this helps clear things up. The link to the post from Clappy will be in the description if you want to take a look for it yourself. And of course, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. But hopefully this clears everything up. Rewards are going to stay the same if you take untradeable from last year. If you take tradable, you're going to get one less pack, but you're going to get collectibles, which you can then trade in for that pack or save for different rewards. We'll see what all the rewards look like next week. But for now, I'm out of here. I appreciate you watching. Have a great night. And I'll see you all tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay frosty.